Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Hit or Miss Hallmark Movie Reviews. Countdown to Christmas continues. I mean, they know. Yeah. This is what we've been doing every day. Well, it's yeah. our sign-in. What do you want? This is a big one. This is the one. My head has literally been spinning for days leading up to this in anticipation and worry. That is very true. <laughs> I'd say longer than days. Yeah. It's, it's because huge. today we are reviewing A Biltmore Christmas. Christmas, starring Bethany Joy Lenz and Christopher Palaha. These two are literally my two favorite Hallmark leads. I think yours too, right? Like Two of my favorites. These are actually oh your my, two favorites. Yeah, they're number ones for me. Yeah. Both of them. I love them both so much. So it's a big deal. The fact that they've finally been paired together, well, we've already said it, you know, the hype for this is huge. Like, this is huge. Yep. The writer here is Marcy Holland. Other credits include Time for You to Come Home for Christmas, Time for Him to Come Home for Christmas, Time for us to come home for Christmas. Oh my goodness. And also time for them to come home for Christmas. You put them I had all in to, there. I had to. Oh yeah. man. So many of those. <laughs> There's more. She didn't write all of them. Have we even seen those? We haven't seen a single one, no. Not yet. Uh, the director here is John Putch. Mm -hmm. Other credits include A Holiday Spectacular, which we loved, yeah. and You Add Me at Aloha. I actually, re one. I actually really like that one. Yeah, that I, I, one. I think I remember like saying, oh, it looked good. Yeah. But he's the real deal, and Hallmark only really springs for him once a year, so you know it's going to be good. Awesome. So, what's this one about? A magical hourglass sends modern-day screenwriter Lucy Hardgrove to the set of the 1947 holiday movie classic, His Merry Wife. However, before she can return to the present, Lucy must make things right or threaten to alter the future forever. Ooh. Now, IMDb, I was reading, <laughs> says that she was transported back to 1946, but Lucy in the movie repeatedly says that it's 1947, so IMDb is wrong if you're reading that. So, what did we think? Uh, I mean, you know, what a fantastic movie this was. I mean, like, let's just get right to it. It <laughs> felt like a dream. There's no beating around the bush here. We loved it. We loved it. She's we, speaking for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we fell for every charming trope that presented itself. You know, first off, a good time travel movie is always fun. Especially when it's done well. Then, set it during Christmas, which is, you know, in essence means Christmas magic. Instant Christmas magic. So clearly, we're already here for that. And I love that it was actually, they had a device, it was the hourglass. Like and the actually, DeLorean. And one of the, yeah, or like Days of Our Lives. Like Sam's through the hourglass. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, and the Bill Marcel, it was just breathtaking. Gorgeous. Like that football field of a front courtyard and like the lavish rooms with like triple fireplaces lining the walls. Just like, it, it like was insane. The grandeur, the romance, the magic, the fantasy all worked so well here. I was sucked right in. Yeah, you definitely were. Yeah. Uh, and the writing and the story were just superb. Like having Lucy tasked with remaking a famous holiday classic film that she doesn't really like. Like so I like good. I like the opening of it. That was a fun spin on the Christmas writer trope. Mm -hmm. And you kind of get the same thing. You gotta go stay here and write about yeah, it. Yeah. Blah blah. blah. Um, but the absolute poetic genius of having her discover that the famous ending wasn't the, in the original script, and then her having to be the one to make the story right, even yes. though she preferred the darker ending, is just. Great. Mind-blowingly beautiful. Amazing. Instant, yes. instant classic. I really loved that. Yes, <laughs> I loved that too. Any narrative shortcomings that could have been in this, you know, maybe, you know, I read somewhere that perhaps the romance felt a little rushed, kind of agree with that. Any other plot holes or reductive conventions pretty much were set aside for me in this one. <laughs> maybe that makes me a bad critic. To, oh, well, I, I was just very much in the moment with this one. I did try to not let my love of Christopher Pilaf overshadow any kind of critical thinking or critical analysis, but it's very hard. I genuinely believe the performances were fantastic and the movie was great. You're not, you're not wrong. But I, I don't think the the romance was rushed at all. Like I feel like the I read the, that and I was kind of pe well, people thought I that thought because the ending was a tiny really, bit rushed. You really have to get into the the time dilation. You know, it's kind of a sci-fi thing. The ending felt a little 
neatly wrapped up for me. Yeah, but it kind of, it kind of, you know, it Hallmark. had to be. It was definitely a, a surprise mm -hmm. ending. But I mean, I feel Quite, like the fleet, like up. the fleeting nature of the romance is what made it extra romantic. Romantic. Like the feeling of having it all pulled away from you at any second, or like the longing when it's gone. Like the whole, re sure. the whole reveal spanned through generations of time, and that was just like the, the sugar Magic. on top. Yeah. I saw more romance between those two in one, mm -hmm. any one scene of the movie than I did in like all the movies. Mm, that's very nice, yeah. Uh, one unique thing I loved was the homage to filmmaking and old Hollywood, or rather the golden age of Hollywood. Um, it was the backdrop to the story, and I loved that Lucy was a screenwriter. You know, finally like a different kind of career for a female lead in a Hallmark movie. Yeah, Great. they literally wrote your favorite Hallmark actress exactly how you want every female lead to be. It was literally Perfect. written for you. Like. Yes, I know, so, I know. So thanks, that's why thanks I, Marcy. I felt very connected to that. Uh, I loved all of the poignant moments between Lucy and Jack, the looks they gave each other, the affectionate smiles, the energy between these two were just palpable. The writing, as we mentioned, included some great lines, you know, simple yet like heavy with with like feeling and love and delight and you know that line about bright eyes. You lost me bright eyes, I'll need a map to find my way back. The line he says when she has to leave. Lucy, I'm glad that you came into my life, even if it was only for a little while. Also, the two of them singing jingle bells at the piano, it was just so endearing. I got sucked right in. I was charmed by almost everything in this movie. Yeah, you know what? You might be a little too close Fine, to this I to make admit a fair it. judgment. I admit it. Maybe I'm biased here. <laughs> But I just, I, I loved it. I no, loved it. It, it was fantastic. It was, I mean, I'm just making fun of you. But. It was just so romantic. I felt like I was floating while watching this. I, I felt quite literally swept away by it all. And I had a smile on my face the whole time I was watching it. You did. And in turn, I did. Yeah. Because of the movie and because of you. Oh. oh. Anywho, let's get to performances. Well, you know I can make this whole thing about Christopher Palaha, right? I mean, but I know, I know, but I'm, I'm gonna rein it in a bit here. I can make a whole video about this great man and how much I love him. But I will say him and Bethany together were quite literally perfect. I think they are both excellent actors, as we've said. They could probably make anything work, like any script they were handed, they could probably make it work. But I really did think they had a spark here. Um, I just want to say something about each individual lead. Bethany, I think she's so natural. She could convey so much with just a simple look. Her eyes, they tell a deeper truth to every character that she plays. She has a smile that literally beams across the room. There are only like a small handful of actresses that can make me well up, and she is at the top of that group. She is a gift to Hallmark. She is a gift. I love her. Palaha. I can't say enough about this man. I think I mention him in almost every review we do, so that says a lot. Uh, aside from the obvious like swoon worthy or my gosh, he's so dashing, he's so charming comments that I can obviously make about him, what really sets him apart for me anyway is that he's a truly fantastic actor. He's so confident and so assured of himself. It seems like he's never seeking the performance, he just arrives naturally to it, or rather he just epitomizes it. And he is the pinnacle of They are, the, they are both acting. the standout for me here. I don't care. That's your cheater. That's so bad. But both, both. This is the one pass you'll ever get until Fine. they do another one together. Fine. <laughs> but it, it really is hard to pick one. Like, do I want to live with mom or dad? See? I know. That's how it feels. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I mean, Bethany is a natural, and it is a dang shame that we only see her once a year. I know. Her performance was easily one of the best of the year from the females, from anybody, but. So I far. I still have to give it to Palaha. Yeah. Friggin' guy. <laughs> He's so cool and so suave. There's just and something so there's something about him. Like he truly does like, take over the screen. Sorry, uh, I'm taking over and you. You're taking over the screen. Sorry, yeah. I just can't. And I really love to love seeing him really get into the suave, like classic film star character, like Jimmy Stewart Deluxe. It's like he was plucked out of a 1940s movie. Just that's him. He he fit. That it, era yeah, it, so it, well, it really did. Right? It really did work, and I, I liked the the parallels. He he also has a sci-fi movie that just came out called The Shit, which we're definitely gonna see. Yeah. I'm scared to see him in a non-Hallmark role. I know it's a bit <laughs> different, but hey, as an actor, you want to uh, expand. Of course. Yes. 
Anywho, let's hit to, head to, hit Vicky, hit Vicky. So, Riker from Star Trek The Next Generation makes an appearance here, uh, played by Jonathan Frakes. Uh, he has a role in this, albeit a very small role. They probably could have utilized him a bit more, I think, something more meaningful, more of an active role. He seemed kind of just plopped in. Like, and you know, something that could have just, any actor could have played that role. It was well, yeah, but that, that was they chose the, that him. was that was what was special about it. It was kind like of it was like divisive, little... more more like uh, like okay. Christopher Lloyd in the train one or whatever, right? All right, all um, right. But it, but it was the nobility of that role that made him a good choice. Like him, you know, the the carrier of the hourglass or whatever at the end. Like he has a presence every time he walks in, and you kind of like respect yeah, and that just and... being the host okay. and kind of being like the you know the guide. I Plus, see. Plus, we also had Robert Picardo in the other yes. time line, and he was also in Star Trek. Just a so many one. Star Trek connections in this one. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I liked I when they why. were doing the, they were both at the door, that scene. That was yeah, yeah. a really cool parallel. <laughs> it was very neat. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, so kind of a nit, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Hit. The cameos. This is always going to be a hit. I'm loving that we are getting so many cameos in so many Hallmark movies this year. I hope this is a trend that stays. So here we had Rachel Boston and Wes Brown I think show up. A stay, I think it's going to get to an annoying point. Okay, maybe. <laughs> Knowing Hallmark, who knows? I don't know. No, who knows? I'm just liking it right now. Um, so they appeared in the remake of His Merry Wife at the end of this movie, and it was great. Very cute. Yeah. And that was a little nod to uh, check in to Christmas. Yeah. Which was great. Loved it. They even mentioned the name of the movie. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Which was weird. a little, mm, that, that was a little on the nose, I think, oh, but it was kind of I fun. Mean, I, as soon as they, they like frame one, I knew it was Rachel Boston. I was like, whoa. Oh, <laughs> me too, right away. And Wes Brown, I could tell. He looked good. He looked really good. Mm -hmm. Hit. Uh, yeah, hit. Mentioning the Criterion Collection and the Turner Classic Movies. Well, she was a... Is, she was a screenwriter, yeah. so kudos. Any screenwriter knows their Criterion Collection and Turner Classic Movies. It's always a win for me. If that's mentioned, it's hardly ever mentioned, but if it is, wow. The movie nerd inside of me was very happy to, to hear that. I've seen it. I watch a ton of Turner Classic Movies in the Criterion Collection. And... It's a cool, cool resource. Yeah. Uh, Hit. Yeah, hit. Sorry. Uh, the attention to small details. I don't know if you noticed while we were watching it, but when Lucy gets in the car with Jack to get Eva back, um, she grabs the seatbelt or where the seatbelt would normally be located, but there's nothing there because it's 1947. Yeah, by the way, you're in a death trap that's made of solid steel. <laughs> I don't know exactly when seatbelts came into existence. Probably like, the 50s, existence, I don't know. But yeah, we should maybe know. In the 50s, maybe? 60s? I have no idea, but that was a, that was a cool little detail, so kudos to the director or writer for that. Uh, hit, it was shot in 13 days. There's the 13 days of Christmas. Interesting. Anyways. Actually, that's no small feat. That's no. amazing, so definitely a hit for that. But they're all professionals. You're dealing with Christopher Palaha. Of course. Bethany Joy Lenz. Come on now. I want to go to that place. I want to go to the Biltmore. Well, the Biltmore is a real place we, I mean, it's in Asheville. Is it South Carolina or no, North, North Carolina? Carolina? North Carolina, okay. Yeah, look, it it's looks gorgeous. Cool. I love this. It's <laughs> visually just stunning, yeah. You're visually stunning. Um, should we bring down the list? Let's do it. Get it. I went into your face, sorry. Mm. I'm not, I can't do it. You did it great. Christmas party or Christmas gathering? Yeah. Yes. Ice skating? No. That's the elusive one this year. Tree decorating, yes. In the beginning, her sister is decorating the tree specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, Santa. Yes, well, we had a Santa at the train station, yeah, or someone who was kind of dressed like Santa, and I want to give it a yes for them. Okay, we're giving it a yes. Hot beverage. Yes. Yes. They went together to get one, remember? Snowball fight. Yes. Surprising, is. but yes. <laughs> nice surprise. A Christmas market. Uh, no. A Christmas carol. Definitely. One of the best scenes in this movie uh, was the Jingle Bell scene. For sure. Loved it. Mistletoe Kiss. No. A character obsessed with Christmas. I don't think so. No, it did kind of. We didn't mention Margaret. Um, she was kind of the com you know comedic relief in this yeah, one. We didn't mention her. She um, was good. She was funny, a little over the top and much, but obviously that's the purpose of that character. She would have been that. She that would have been Christmas obsessed character. with Christmas, but she is obsessed with his merry wife. The only points this one loses is it wasn't as Christmassy, but you know it just has it's, it's about a holiday movie. It yeah. It's got to be inherent. I'm just saying Margaret is an obsessed character. Fair. Okay. Well, yeah. Holiday tradition. Yes. Yes. 
Uh, and Christmas magic. Yeah. A hundred points for that. All the 100 magic. Points. I love, love the magic. It. I love the little effect. This in magic the was great. I felt it. It was it was romantic and beautiful and majestic and fantasy. It was everything. It worked. So. It really worked for you. It did. You know, I'm I'm not blind to some of the plot holes and some of the things that maybe weren't addressed and some of the. I think the it's hard. I think it's hard to wrap up poke, ending. It's hard to poke holes in the plot when it's a time based thing. I've, I have. No, I know. I'm we very, have to suspend, I'm, obviously. I'm very into sci fi and stuff like that and multi dimension, multi timeline, and it didn't seem far fetched to me. It was like, okay. No, no, the far fetched like was fine. It was just that I thought maybe. Okay, one thing I really actually liked that I want to mention is. I liked that Lucy wanted an alternate ending to this, and she actually wrote the alternate ending, the more realistic ending, the less happy of the endings. And I thought they were going to do the same thing with this. I didn't think they would see each other again. No, because, because no, but listen, they ended the happy well, ending. They I had know, to. First of all, that would be a very unpopular way to end a Hallmark movie, and people would be very, very upset, so you don't want to do that. I'll never happen in that movie. Can't make it too realistic, right? <laughs> no, okay. But that would have been very interesting if they did that because it kind of mirrors what she originally wanted. It, it almost you know se I mean, it seemed like they were going to, but when they I kind of when they tied when it in. When she decided not to turn the thing, I was like, you know what? I like this. I like this. I'm sad, but I like it. He had already come back though. But you know what the scary part Clearly is? Clearly they didn't do it. What that what that insinuated was that he was stuck in time yes. for 60 something, which whatever, is strange. How, like years, which is actually terrifying. Yeah, that's it's very It's kind weird. of like the Ant-Man thing where it's like, oh, um. But. I mean, the whole like, oh, it was a cover up story that I'm dead. I mean, it's a little a little too convenient, a little too neatly that wrapped up. Like, to, I see that. That didn't even need to be. I see that. I'm not totally that. blinded by my love. Yeah. I see it. But yeah. I just pushed it aside. Anyway. Well, let's see <laughs> how much you loved it. Okay. On the Christmas meeting. For, Do it. I'll bring it up. I am going to give a Biltmore Christmas 11 pipers piping, although it's it really is teetering onto 12 drummers drumming. It really is, but 11 pipers piping. That's still a amazing. Yeah, that, you know, and <laughs> it's my I'm, highest one so far. Is it? Yeah. I think I've already given two 11s this year. I haven't given which, an 11. Which means I have, have to. I? No, I don't think so. I think I'm pretty sure I have. Um, so I'm also going to give a Biltmore Christmas 11 pipers piping. I mean, it's almost perfect. It's almost perfect. We loved it. We think it's definitely worth checking it, out. If it was a little more Christmassy, it, it would have been. Sure, yeah, that too. It that could too. Have been as well. Yeah. But yeah, what did you think of a Bill Mark Christmas? I mean, it was Christmassy. Where would you place it on the Christmas meter? Yes, let us know in the comments below. And um, we'll see wow, you. We, made through, we made it through this weekend so far. Oh, yeah, a few more to go. A few more, but we got the, the big ones. We and, got the big ones. But thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.